Myself and Brother Stanley Joseph, we're glad uh, that you're either tuning in with us live uh, as we're doing the lesson, or uh, you will be watching the lesson uh, sometime within the next few days. As was mentioned by uh, Brother Stanley, the lesson today is on the topic of Christians are not governed by the limited commissions. Christians are not governed by the limited commissions. Now, some people may not even understand what the limited commissions are or were, and that's the reason that we want to discuss them uh, we come upon them in the New Testament in our studies of the Gospels, and we need to put them uh, in their proper place, much like the teaching of John the Baptist. It had its purpose, it had its time, and it also had its conclusion. Likewise, uh, the two limited commissions that we find in the Scriptures had a purpose. Jesus had a reason for giving them. They served their purpose. They were concluded, and we are no longer obligated. Neither indeed were we ever obligated ourselves to these limited commissions. They had a specific group, both of uh, the receivers, as well as to whom they went to. And so today we are in Lesson 11. As we uh, begin in our study today, we want to uh, take this opportunity, since we are uh, live and, and studying today, uh, we want to take this opportunity to wish uh, Brother Stanley and Sister Rada, a happy anniversary, which is uh, tomorrow, and we hope that all uh, continues to go well uh, with them so that they may have a long and blessed life together. Uh, we also pray for their family and for we're thankful for uh, the great efforts that they make uh, for the cause of Christ. Uh, there in India, as well as assisting us with our work uh, here in the United States and around the world. And we're just thankful uh, that they are uh, willing to commit a portion of their lives uh, to our work and uh, devote their lives 
to the service of God. So let's get into the lesson uh, today with the limited uh, commissions, and that is plural. There were uh, two that we know of that are in the scriptures. And as we have already alluded to, to a certain extent, uh, there is a reason why we refer to them as being limited in their scope. Uh, however, there are those today uh, who do not see them as a limited commission. Uh, they seek to teach that these are still binding upon us today. And so that's why we want to clarify as we continue ever deeper into our studies that we want to help clarify uh, that these are not binding upon us today. And when we're looking at these, we have to be very careful. There are some things that we can learn by their examples but like the Old Testament and, as we said, the work of John the Baptist, we need to be careful about how we go about making application uh, of these commissions uh, and that we don't read more into it and try to get more out of it than what it is. Uh, from our perspective today, uh, these limited commissions have a historical value rather than a commandment or guidance value. That is, we are not obligated to follow these. However, there are great lessons that uh, we can gain from them, uh, seeing how God dealt with them, just like how he dealt with with John the Baptist and how he worked with the Israelites. So we're going to uh, specifically today be looking more at Luke's account of this. And we're going to begin, if you want to follow along with us, if you can see it on the screen or follow out of your Bibles, we're going to be uh, spending most of our time. We'll, we'll do some other uh, passages, but we're going to be looking in Luke chapter 9 and chapter 10, uh, where Luke discusses these limited commissions. And so Luke 9 verse 1, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves, nor script, nor bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. This is what we call the first limited commission or the limited commission of the twelve. And as we see here in Luke 9, verse 1, Jesus called his twelve disciples, whom we today refer to as apostles. And of those twelve whom he called apostles, he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And so as he prepares to send them out in this limited commission, he gives them, that is the twelve, not all of the disciples, not everyone who was with him, but he gave the twelve power and authority over all devils or demons so that they might cast them out and that they might cure diseases or that they might be able to perform miracles. 
Now, Hebrews, the second chapter, tells us that uh, this was the word, this begins to be the word which was spoken uh, by our Lord and later those who heard him. And in this particular case, uh, as Hebrews 2 says, uh, the word which both Jesus and the apostles, as well as later the disciples, uh, they performed miracles, they cast out devils or demons, they cured diseases to confirm uh, the things which were being taught. And specifically, we find that the things that they were teaching at this time were consistent with what we find Jesus teaching, and that was uh, the kingdom of God. Uh, part of the message Jesus was teaching is an extension of John the Baptist, which was to repent and believe the good news for the kingdom of heaven uh, was at hand, and there was a baptism of repentance that was uh, a confirmation uh, of their faith and their obedience to that. But as we see in this limited commission, as they went forward preaching, there are some interesting things that Jesus tells them. And what he tells them is, rather than preparing for a journey, uh, when all of us want to go on a holiday or a vacation, a trip, we always usually carry with us luggage. We have changes of clothes. We have things that we might need. But it's interesting in this limited commission of the 12, Jesus said, take nothing. Take nothing for your journey. In essence, do not make preparations for where you're being sent. Uh, and as we look at this list, he says uh, that they are not to take staves or their walking sticks. These walking sticks or staves uh, were used along the trips. Uh, they served many different purposes. One of those was for protection from wild animals from robbers or from those who would seek to harm them. Uh, it was used for other purposes uh, along the way, but we'll stick with that. No script, and the word script there for many seems to imply money, but that's on out here. Script in this particular sense was a bag uh, a shoulder bag which people carried extra provisions and supplies. But in this particular case, Jesus says, do not carry a bag, uh, do not pack for this trip. He tells them, don't take with you bread. Uh, like most people taking a journey, uh, they usually will carry some food with them. Uh, to uh, nourish them along the way. But Jesus says, no bread, don't take any money. And that seems so strange to us today because uh, we always want to make sure that we have uh, sufficient funds to take care of us. He says, don't take two coats apiece. Uh, that is, don't pack extra clothes, don't take extra clothes. So the interesting thing is, is Jesus sent the 12 out on this limited commission to the cities and places they were to go, and they went empty-handed and they went with the clothes which they had on their backs and nothing more. Uh, you know, this uh, is a very interesting thing. He tells them when they go into a city, whatsoever house you enter into, there abide and thence or from there depart. As they came into these cities preaching the message of the kingdom of God, 
teaching lessons consistent with what we uh, could find in Matthew 5, 6, 7, the Sermon on the Mount, talking about the coming of the kingdom. Jesus says when you enter into a city and someone extends to you hospitality to their house, there abide. Go into that house and stay there until you leave. Uh, again, uh, we'll We'll talk a little bit about this, but Jesus is trying to teach the disciples and the apostles lessons uh, to allow God to provide, and again, not to be extremely particular. Don't enter into a house and say, well, that bed's not comfortable. Let me see if I can find somewhere else to stay. Wherever you enter, whoever extends hospitality, there stay. And whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. Uh, if the city, if no one in the city extends hospitality, no one in the city seems to be interested in the things of the kingdom, he says, knock the dust off your shoes and don't take it with you. Uh, you don't want to take any bad uh, from that city, but you want to prepare yourself, be open, be ready for the next city in which you go to, which we pray will have better hospitality and respond better. And in verse 6, we're told, and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel, and healing everywhere. And so they went as Jesus had commanded them. They did as he commanded them, and they taught the message that he had given unto them. And so uh, a great deal of what is going on here is uh, that Jesus is trying to teach uh, a lesson to the disciples to rely upon the mercy and the goodness of God and the loving and compassion care that other people of God uh, would show to them. In the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter, Matthew adds uh, a little bit more to the instructions that Jesus gave. Luke does not include this, but in Matthew chapter 10 and in verse 5, he says, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so this is another aspect as to why we refer to this as a limited commission. If we were to take this at face value today, we would believe that uh, only Jewish people can be saved. And Jesus was preaching and teaching among Israel to them was first offered the gospel. To uh, the children of Israel was extended the opportunity to accept the gospel first. And we know on the day of Pentecost, it went to the Jew first. And it's not until Acts 10 that the gospel goes to the Gentiles. So God had a plan. He had a reason. But specifically at this time, in this commission, they were to go to the lost sheep of the household of Israel. And this was uh, this commission, this limited commission, and this trip, and the rules behind it was uh, for their benefit as well as the kingdom. And we're going to look a little further into that. Now, I apologize uh, for whatever reason. 
Uh, our connection is not good today, and the slides are uh, running behind. Uh, and I'm going to be reading, if you're following along, from Matthew, the sixth chapter. Uh, this is not a part of the limited commission, but it helps us to understand what Jesus was doing. In Matthew 6, beginning in verse 24, Jesus said, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not life more than meat and the body than raiment. Be not anxious for your life. That's what Jesus is telling him here when he says, take no thought. That is, don't be worried or anxious. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, and again being anxious or worrisome, can add one cubit to his stature, to his height? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. They Grow, uh, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, or clothe you, O ye of little faith? Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, was trying to get his disciples not to be anxious and worrisome for the things of life, not to spend a great deal of time being anxious or worrisome. And this is where the Limited Commission comes in as Jesus starts to try and teach the disciples this lesson. Don't take staves, don't take a bag, don't take extra food, don't pack extra clothes. Learn to rely upon God and upon his mercy. Do the things that God has called you to do, and he will provide. Later in Matthew 6, verse 31, Jesus says, Therefore, take no thought. That is, be not anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Take no thought, again, don't be worrisome about the morrow or tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take care of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Jesus taught these principles in what we know as the Sermon on the Mount. And so he is sending the twelve, the apostles, who will be responsible for guiding and leading the church out on this limited commission that they may learn to rely upon God and his will and his way, that God will open doors of blessings to them if they will seek first the kingdom of heaven, then all of these things will be taken care of. And the interesting thing is, is that the 12 went out. They accomplished what God had given them to do. And they returned back 
And if we look carefully, uh, we realize uh, that uh, none of them starved to death. Uh, none of them uh, was without clothing. None of them were injured or harmed. Uh, and so as we look at this and as we think of this, uh, what God was trying to teach them, hopefully they learned as they come back, their faith was strengthened in God's ability to provide and to watch for them and to care for them. And so that is the limited commission. Uh, go into the cities, go to the places that I instruct you. Uh, whatever house you enter into, there abide, eat the food which they provide, uh, teach the lessons, uh, and at the same time, enjoy the work of the Lord. Enjoy the fact that God will provide and that God uh, will take care of you. And so we have the first limited commission, limited uh, to uh, the Jews, not incorporating the Samaritans or uh, the uh, Gentiles, preparing cities, yes, that Jesus will eventually himself uh, go into. And so we're told that in the book of Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning there in verse 1, that after these things, after the 12 had went out and returned, had an opportunity to discuss with the Lord in the presence of his disciples uh, the events and circumstances that took place during uh, their journeys, we're told then that there is a second limited commission that Jesus uh, begins to send the disciples out on. And this is the second limited commission. This time it is limited to 70 of his disciples. He sent them out two and two, or in pairs, that they might, again, encourage one another, that they might have companionship in the things that they were doing. And so he appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. And so this second limited commission was to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord, much like John the Baptist and his preachings had prepared the people of Israel for the coming of Jesus, had their mind considering and thinking about these things as Jesus was preparing to enter into the various cities, he sent these pairs, 30 teams, out to preach and teach about the kingdom and the fact that the master or Jesus was coming and would be visiting the city so that they would be prepared, so that there would be opportunity not only for those who dwelt uh, within the city, uh, but also those round about that they might prepare themselves for the time that Jesus would come. And therefore he said unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he may send forth laborers into his harvest. And these individuals uh, were going about preaching and teaching the kingdom. And so uh, we find more and more. Now, there were many disciples who were with Jesus and were accompanying him, but that only allowed them to speak to a particular group of people in a particular city. 
And so by sending these teams of 30 out, uh, in a way he was able to do uh, with them uh, 30 times what he could have by himself. And again, the cities were better prepared for what Jesus would have to say uh, when he arrived. And so they went forth uh, preaching and leading the way for uh, Jesus. And I see a lot of this as the same as John the Baptist. And as we continue on down into verse 4, their commission was much the same. Carry neither purse, nor script, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. Uh, in much the same as before, uh, don't carry extra provisions, don't take uh, the, the purse, the money bag, don't take script, which uh, is the purse. Don't take an extra pair of shoes. And the interesting thing about this uh, was the fact that in this limited commission, uh, they were told to salute no man by the way. Or that is while they were journeying along to the city or cities where they were sent, they were to go in essence straight to that city. Don't stop along the way and speak with others, but go where you're sent and do what it is that I'm sending you to do. If you're sent to such and such city, go to that city. Do what you're told to do. And so into whatever house you enter, uh, say first, peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. It shall uh, turn, or if not, it shall turn to you again. This is a Hebraism. Uh, it talks about one inclined. When it says son of peace, it's not necessarily speaking about Jesus uh, as the son of peace, but uh, it's, it's a concept or an idea that if there is one there who is inclined to peace, uh, then uh, again, it will be a peaceful abode. If not, it will return your wishes to you. And this idea of the son of peace and the casting forth of peace uh, upon this house, part of the Jewish Hebrew greetings of shalom, uh, of, of peace, a way of greeting. Same thing in that house remain, eating, drinking such things as they give for the labor is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. We have a little more of, a, of an understanding of what we were talking about in the previous part. Uh, go into that house, uh, remain there, eat and drink such things as they give. Now what that means is if you get a particular food, which we would think of as a poor man's meal. Uh, again, don't turn up your nose, don't reject it, but eat and drink what they have. Because generally speaking, when a house extends hospitality, they're going to provide to you whatever it is that they have more of or the best of to make your stay more comfortable. And so, again, eat what is put in front of you. This is not a charge uh, as we see Peter in Acts 10. It's, it's not talking about if they put a pork chop in front of you, which is from an unclean animal, eat it. That's not what Jesus is saying here. Uh, he is sending them to the people within the land of Israel, to the Jewish people to Jewish cities. And so 
Uh, it's not about whether the food is clean or unclean from a Jewish standpoint versus uh, the Gentiles, but it's about, uh, again, honoring the house, which is providing for you, eat what they give you, drink what they give you, and accept the fact that the labor is worthy uh, of hire or the hire. And so if they give you good things, uh, if they extend good food, better food, again, receive that. Uh, and as they go, they were also uh, told to heal the sick. So that means God gave them likewise power to heal the sick and to say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. And he gives them the same instruction as before. If they do not receive you, uh, again, shake the dust that cleaveth to you and wipe it off as a sign against them. And Jesus says, I say unto you to be more tolerable uh, in the day of judgment and essence for the city of uh, Sodom than that city. And so uh, we have the instructions, not a great deal of difference between what he first gave to the 12 and in the second commission. Most of that uh, is pretty much the same. Uh, it's just extended to more. The 12 uh, were sent for their purpose. Likewise, the 70 were sent in much the same both to prepare the way for the Lord, but also at the same time to prepare these people to understand about God's provision, God's care for them. Sometimes people today are too particular. They worry about things that they have no need of. Uh, and again, if while they were visiting, and the whole purpose behind this is if while they were visiting, something happened to their coat or their outer garment, if, if something happened, then someone uh, would take compassion on them, seeing that they didn't have anything with them. Uh, they would have provided another coat. If you damaged your sandals or your shoes, someone would have had them repaired or would have done the things which were necessary. And so it is an opportunity for them to participate in preparing uh, the way of the Lord. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is teaching both them and preparing. And as we go on into Luke 10, uh, we're told that the 70 returned again to Jesus with joy, uh, having participated in this and having done the things that God had called them to do, having interacted and had fellowship uh, with like-minded people in these various cities and towns and places, when they returned to Jesus, they returned with joy because of the way in which things had uh, occurred and had carried out. And as we see in the lesson here, uh, they say that even the devils were subject unto us through thy name. They did miracles. They did what Jesus called them to do. They taught the lessons. They went to the cities. There is great delight in having success for the Lord. Sadly, uh, today, many people have never really uh, experienced true success of teaching someone about the gospel, bringing them uh, to the Lord, doing good deeds for others, caring about them. Sadly, many people are self-centered and focused upon themselves. These individuals, just like the 12, went out seeking to accomplish the will of God and the things that God promised them, the things that Jesus promised them, they were able to achieve. 
Now, we can learn from this that God never requires anything of us which we cannot do or that we cannot provide. And so they came back rejoicing and they were excited. And Jesus, uh, here in Luke chapter 10, speaking about their power over the devils and over the things of evil. In verse 19 of Luke 10, Jesus says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 19. In talking about Satan, and having power over them, Jesus speaks about giving them power over serpents and scorpions, and he says over all the power of the enemy, that being represented by scorpion, scorpions and serpents and the devil himself. And this is a parallel verse to what Jesus gave in the Great Commission. In Mark 16, 17, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so this, in essence, is in many ways a sort of parallel passage. Sometimes when we're Looking in Mark 16, some people have uh, took the concept that they should literally pick up serpents and scorpions and they ought to drink poison things. This is just a part of what Jesus was teaching them, uh, and he gives that over to the church, and we'll get into the Great Commission, uh, Lord willing, next week. But I just want you to see that this is a parallel passage speaking about uh, not literal serpents and scorpions, but the devil and all the evil forces of the enemy. And so when he's speaking uh, with his disciples here, continuing on in Luke 10, he says, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. You know, it is a good thing to rejoice that we're doing the things of God and we're having success as we do them. And one of the things that they were delighted in is that they were able to cast out demons, that even they were subject to them. And for those who are and were familiar at that time, as well as now with uh, the concept of demons, uh, demons did not just go out of people. Uh, not on a regular basis. And so great sign when Jesus was casting out demons and now they had did it and they saw the power that God had given them. But he said, don't spend a great deal of time rejoicing in the fact that the evil spirits are uh, subject to you, but rather if you want to rejoice, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. When we do the will of God, when we do what he has sent us to do, uh, the, the rejoicing uh, is the fact that, like the Apostle Paul could say, I fought a good fight, I've finished my course, I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me in that day. And not unto me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. And so uh, we rejoice uh, that through our life, we have the opportunity to experience the salvation of God. Uh, and so he says unto them, uh, you know, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And we're told in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid 
these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. There are these 70 individuals in this limited commission, as well as the 12 apostles before. These individuals, many of them, most of them, were just simple, everyday, ordinary people. They were not highly educated, highly skilled. They were not what many would have thought of as the uh, top rung of the ladder of social structure. But Jesus said uh, he was thanking the Father that to these 70 and to the 12 and to those who still would experience even greater things, he delighted that those uh, were being revealed. It says, all things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is, but the Father, and who the Father is, but the Son, and he whom the Son will reveal him. And so again, to these individuals, these 70 were, in essence, receiving revelation uh, of just what it was like to live, love, and serve Jesus, and to appreciate who he was and who the Father was that sent him. And so after praying, it says he turned unto his disciples and said privately, that is to his disciples, blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. That is the 70 who experienced that to the uh, apostles who experienced that and to others who were seeing and experiencing these things as disciples of Christ. He says, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Again, a great opportunity to rejoice in the things of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 1 Peter, the first chapter, uh, Peter speaks about this to his readers when he talks about the salvation which God has given to them. In 1 Peter 1 and 10, he says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. This is what Jesus was saying. Prophets and kings and others had desired to see the things that they were seeing, and they, uh, his disciples at that time, were experiencing it and were allowed to participate in it as the 12 apostles and the 70. And he says they were searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And that's the things that we today are experiencing in the body of Christ, the church. And to those individuals, the prophets and others, it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. And he says, which things the angels desire to look into. You know, it was exciting when Jesus was on earth for the 12 to be sent out on that limited commission and to be successful in that. It was exciting to be a part of the limited commission and to see all the things that they were able to accomplish. But there's even greater things when we get to the great commission, Lord willing, next week and to the church, the body of Christ that we ourselves are exposed to that Peter says the angels themselves desire to look into when it comes to that which applies to the church, the kingdom here on earth. 
As we begin to wrap the lesson up today and, and the conclusion of the limited commissions, you know, the 12 finished the first commission. Jesus gave them something to do, and he instructed them into how to do it, and they went forward and completed that task. And so there, there is nothing of the first commission which is yet to be accomplished. It was fulfilled in that time. And the 70 who were again sent on their own limited commission returned to Jesus having completed the task, having finished what he sent them to do. And so there's nothing left of the second limited commission that, uh, again, would be applicable to us to do today. Neither the first nor the second was given to the church after A.D. Uh, 33, after the day of Pentecost in Acts 2. These things were fulfilled long before the church came to ex into existence. And so we, that is the church, are subjects of the Great Commission, a commission that will last until Jesus comes again. The limited commissions had, again, their purpose, their reason, their time, and their time has passed. The Great Commission is still active as it was on the day of Pentecost, reaching out into all the world. And we'll look at that lesson and we'll talk about the Great Commission uh, in further detail, Lord willing, in our next lesson. As far as the class assignment for lesson 11, if you are a student seeking the certificate program, then we ask that you look to the 25 questions that are at the end of this study, answer those questions, and submit those answers to our office by Friday of this week. And those should go to ChristWayBible at gmail.com. Please make sure that you get that in in a timely manner. I'm going to open it up to questions in just a moment if there are any, uh, but before we do that, we'd like to have a word of prayer. Our most kind of gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day and for this opportunity. We're thankful for the opportunity to see how that the disciples went forth and were successful in the limited commissions. And we pray, Father, as we prepare ourselves for next week and our lives to your service, that we will be successful in that great commission which you gave to us. Father, be with us in this week. Strengthen us, guide us, open our minds, our understanding, that we might better understand your will for our lives, so that when this life is over, heaven can be our home. We pray, Father, that you be with the sick, the afflicted, the hurting, the widows, the orphans, those suffering in war-torn areas. We just know, Father, that there is a lot of sorrow and grief. And it's our prayer, Father, that a measure of grace might be provided to them sufficient unto their need. Be with us, keep us in your care, and return us at the next appointed time, we pray. In Jesus' name, and amen. In closing this evening, we wish to thank you again for spending your time in study with us. We hope the lesson has been uplifting and motivational. We encourage you to return again for our next lesson. Until then, may we invite you to visit our website. You will find many study opportunities. Our resource page has links to the Gospel Broadcasting Network, a 24-7 station with many great Christian programs and speakers. In Search of the Lord's Way, with Brother Phil Sanders. We have two links for Bibles and downloadable software. If you are looking to really expand your knowledge, perhaps you might like to try World Video Bible School, a college-level learning site free of charge. So, until next time, 
May God bless and keep you in His care as we walk together in His truth. And remember as always, the Churches of Christ salute you.